What is up, fellow nerds, and welcome to Not Your Status Quo trailer breakdown for Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Let's jump right in. The trailer starts with Shang-Chi back at his home in his first groove in that wood uh, pole. Well, we see him training on it later in the trailer, assuming this is after his 10 years of living his life and the helicopter scene, which we see later in the trailer, where he's landing back at his father's base. Now we see Shang-Chi working as a valet. Normally we see the superheroes of the Marvel universes in these fancy cars and he's actually parking them. So I thought that was a nice little uh, uh, juxtapositioning for this hero to kind of show he came from the super rich family and now he's just doing sort of menial work. And this is where we hear the voiceover of Wen Wee, the Mandarin saying, I let you live your life for 10 years. And the Mandarin sends his goons out to go ahead and pick up Shang-Chi and uh, you know after he's lived his life but we we'll see later on in the movie he actually is able to bring him back so how much did that training actually help him you know i don't know now we see him doing push-ups in his modest apartment once again kind of breaking away from being the son of this rich and powerful man and with a nice little touch we see a kung fu hustle, hustle poster up in his room now we see him living his 10 years away from his father, singing karaoke with Katie, that's Aquafina's character, and he's singing Whole New World from Aladdin. Over sideways and under. I guess coming from, you know, China like that to live in San Francisco would be a whole new world. And plus, it's a Disney movie and it's a Disney song, so they probably saved some money being able to sing that karaoke in this. Obviously, Keith, that was exactly the reason why they probably used that song. If you think back to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, they did the same exact thing, it being a Sony movie. They were able to use a lot of Sony songs that they jammed in there and a bunch of other Sony products. So obviously Disney owning this film is going to shove as many Disney properties in there as well. It's a good song to have in there because it is like a whole new world. It's the corner of the Marvel Universe that we haven't seen yet being Kung Fu. Actually, Shang-Chi was created in the 70s during the Kung Fu craze. Everybody was Kung Fu fighting. Everybody was Kung Fu fighting. Those kids were fast as lightning. And I want to make, mention one other thing. This movie takes place during the blip. So again, it is a whole new world. There's no uh, other heroes that would, um, would have affected the outcome of this movie. Now we see a montage of him hanging with his friends, drinking beers while the Mandal Mandarin's voiceover says, and where did that get you? So it's pretty obvious he has disapproved of his choices while he was on his 10 year little hiatus from him. Back in the past, we see young Shang-Chi at that wooden pole from the beginning with Death Dealer with a name like that, am I right? Holy forking shirt balls. Uh, watching over his training. And then we see a present day shot and then another of him as a not quite the same kid we saw at the beginning, but a little older, just hitting that pole with a barrage of punches. We see a young Shang-Chi walking with Wen Wu, and we see a little taste of his power with the Ten Rings just busting up a table. We see a young Shang-Chi fighting with some men in black. I'm assuming they are warriors of Wen Wu, and this is kind of a training session because we do see at one point them hitting him over the head with a pole staff to see if it can stop him. And he does take it like a champ. It doesn't knock him down, doesn't take him out. So we know, you know, this training he's getting from his father is to definitely training him to be the master of Kung Fu. Then we hear a voiceover saying, so the most dangerous people in the world will not be able to kill you. It looks like a tournament that we kind of heard about while the movie was shooting. And then we see another shot of Death Dealer and Razor Fist. Is that better or worse than Taser Face? Looking in the mirror and in all seriousness saying to yourself, you know what would be a really kick-ass name? Taser Face! <laughs> and it does look like this is taking place in Madripoor, who we, that we just saw in The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So it'll be nice to have that little uh, synergy with that uh, Disney Plus show during the a helicopter is landing at Wen Wu's compound with Shang-Chi. You can see the Legend of the Ten Rings emblem on the landing pad with Shang-Chi, Katie, Shang-Chi's sister, Shaolin, and Razor Fist. Uh, this is probably after the fight on the bus that brings Shang-Chi back to his father. And that base, what a base. We see anti-aircraft, we see tons of troops. So we know that 
the Mandarin has really built out his fortress to be impenetrable, at least he hopes so. This has me wondering if we're going to get a cameo from the previously fake Mandarin from the Iron Man movies. You know, Doug, that is an excellent question because we did see during the all hail the king, you know, Marvel one shot, the Mandarin's people did come and take Trevor Slattery, that wonderful actor from Iron Man 3, away. So we may see him. Maybe it's just a cameo of Ben Kingsley in a jail cell, which would be fitting for what they did to us during Iron Man 3. Now we see a very Mandarin looking shot of Wen Wu with the 10 ring symbol behind him. And he says in the voiceover, it is time for you to take your place at my side. We see Wen Wu about to face down an army with the rings glowing on his arms. And that is a change from the comics. It's not rings on his finger, but armbands. And personally, I kind of like it. It looks pretty cool. And we see the Foo Dogs, which are the giant lion looking dogs that need probably need some CGI work before this movie is released. Absolutely not, Keith. This has been in production since 2019. They're perfect. That's how they're going to stay. And I would have it no other way. Hey, Keith, I wanted to ask you about those bracelets on his arm. Like you said in the comics, they're rings on his fingers. What do they do? Do they, um, they give him some powers? Can you explain that to me? Yes, Dave, they did, you know, kind of change it over a little bit. They're no longer rings in this, but they're the bands or the bracelets around the arm. And they actually came from... I don't want to call him Dragon because he's more of an alien, but he looks like a dragon. Fin Fang Foom, they were part of him. And the Mandarin actually stole them from Fin Fang Foom. So I'm wondering if we are going to actually see the dragon alien Fin Fang Foom in this movie. They might change his name perhaps, but I'm thinking we may see him in this movie. Then we get a wonderful shot of Wen Wu's power over water while Shang-Chi, Shaolin, and Katie look on. Is this a show of power to keep Shang-Chi in check, possibly? And then we hear Shang-Chi telling Wen Wu, That's not going to happen. Is this him explaining that he's not going to stay by his side, or is this a trailer trick and he's talking about something a little different at another time? We'll have to wait and see when the movie comes out. And now we get a wonderful scene with Death Dealer and Shang-Chi fighting in an empty building. Uh, Wen Wu fighting someone wearing the colors of the living weapon of Kung Ang Lung, the Iron Fist. Does this mean we might get a reference to Kung Ang Lung and the Iron Fist, maybe leading to Danny, Danny Rand coming into the MCU? Not sure, but the colors make me a little optimistic, and hopefully we do get a little information on this and we get you know a little more of that outside of the Netflix show, but into the MCU, maybe Disney Plus or the, one of the movies. As long as it's not Finn Jones. How dare you, Dave? That was a work of art. And Shang-Chi only wishes he was as awesome and powerful as Danny Rand. And we get another scene of the battle from earlier in the trailer between Wen Wu and that army. And we see, you know, the, the Foo Dogs. We see what looks to be flying dragons. We see weapons that are kind of lighting up, kind of like Razor Fist's. Uh, razor fist a little later in the trailer but it definitely looks very promising this could be you know a really amazing battle as long as they get that cgi all figured out and everything working there then we see shang chi battling his sister which could be the tournament we heard about and you will notice that she has that little necklace around her neck a lot like shang chi did earlier in the, the trailer is this how wen wu is tracking his son and able to keep him back and bring him back after that 10 years now we see Razor Fist attacking Shang-Chi on the bus. Now we do see that Razor Fist has the emblem of the Ten Rings on it, on his jacket or whatever he's wearing. He doesn't have sleeves, of course. Uh, now is this when he's trying to bring him home or is this maybe after he escapes again and he comes back to hunt him down for Wen Wu? Then we see Wen Wu battling Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi and his his uniform for the MCU or what we think is going to be the uniform for the MCU. Looks like he's on the receiving end of a, a kick that's probably not feeling too well. And then we see once again, a battle from ages ago where it looks like Wen Wu is actually parting the army with his powers like the Red Sea. And if you look closely, this fortress looks similar to what we see earlier. And this is in the olden days. And obviously when the helicopter lands, it was very fortified with anti, you know, aircraft, aircraft weapons and all of that good stuff. I'm sorry, Keith, but every time you say Wen Wu, I think of Wendy Wu, the homecoming warrior. Ah! 
back on the bus, we get some sweet kung fu moves from Shang-Chi. And Katie asks him, who are you? And I really hope this is a trailer trick because if he goes into a pose as an answer to that question, I will walk out of that movie. But I'm pretty sure since we see him at the front of the bus and uh, it's a little juxtapositioning of where they're at, but I don't think that's how it is. It's just, you know, good for the trailer to see that Kung Fu pose. Now we see a bus out of control with Shang-Chi saving people. He pulls a girl back into the bus when it's tipping over, holding another girl back with his leg. And it finally comes to a stop and Katie says, we make a good team. And yes, yes they do. Yeah, that whole bus scene, it reminded me of Speed. Great movie with Keanu Reeves, who should be in the MCU at some point, I would hope. Anyway, uh, I'm sure I'm sure glad that there's nobody in those cars because that could have caused a lot of carnage. There's going to be carnage. Coming September 3rd, and I personally am looking forward to this movie. I loved kung fu movies as a kid, and this looks like it's going to kind of keep that sort of feel to it while being a part of the MCU. So it'll be a little bit for everybody involved. But that's what we think. Did you guys see anything that we didn't see? Any little Easter eggs that we may have missed? Leave it in the comments down below, and we'll see you next time at Not Your Status Quo.